Someday somebody's going to describe to me why every one of these takes like multiple takes to get the way I want it. All right, so we're going to talk about logging, print statements and logging, death to print statements in Python code. What we want to do is we want to have the ability to print, to send output, debug and other kinds of output somewhere and be able to turn that on and off with configuration rather than having to comment code on and off, right? Comment in and out. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the Python logging subsystem. This is a standard part. You can see great tutorials on it everywhere. I'm going to talk about it in some depth. But the main thing we're going to do here is show some code and uh, provide sample code to make this work. So basically what happens is you replace all the print statements with logger statements. And we instantiate, we create a logger in every Python file. And we do that so that because we can actually change the amount of output that comes out of each file. So loggers actually have five levels, debug, info, warning, error, critical. You basically, and you can see the recommendations on the internet from the Python projects. Um, basically, you know what, this should be bigger. Um, what you do is you set the level that you want to see and everything that is less critical than that is blanked out. So in this case, Critical is the worst. Debug is the least use is the most verbose, but the least um, critical, like the least dangerous. Your bad stuff is least happening. So in this case, uh, by default, we typically set it info. What that means is everything that is info and above info, warning, error, and critical will show up in the output. Uh, and we turn and since we set it at info, nothing that comes with a log dot debug will show up. That's the default settings for most people. In this case, uh, although sometimes it's at the warning level. In this case, what I'm going to do is I have info and log and debug statements. The debugs are used for me to debug stuff like what's happening. And so what I did was um, I actually the logger actually lets you plug in multiple handlers, basically things that decide if the output's going to be sent out. So I have one handler in my program that actually goes for error and above. It only gets things that are errors and critical. And I have another handler that takes everything that's debugging above. So that file will have all the output that's generated. Um, assuming, and but I can tell it whether to init, what to enable, right? So by default, in my case, I actually set the master logging level at info, and I don't set the logging level in each of the individual handlers, so that makes it info. So in my case, the debug file will actually only have info and above in it. If I had enabled debug logs, then the debug file would have that. So uh, you can look that up for more details. But basically what we do is one time we load the configuration from a YAML file, Y-A-M-L or Y-M-L file. You know, there are other ways to do that, but this is the simplest it supports. We do that one time to configure all the all the handlers. And then in each file that you want to log in, each Python file, you create a logger and that logger will automatically get configured with the right handlers based on what was in the YAML file. And so I'm going to, and I'm going to, so here's where I have a sample code for this. If you look at this network intrusion uh, program, it's actually completely configured. It's got a logging config file and a logging loader, and I will watch you through the code. So basically what happens here is I have a logging config file that gets loaded one time, one time. The config gets loaded once it loads the config YAML file in the main program at the top of the main program, wherever your main is, you basically load the loggers, logging config. And then because I want to log in the main program, I create logger equals logging dot get logger and I give it a name and I use, basically this will end up with main as the name. And so this will always cause the file name to be put out. So if you get a lot, bunch of print statements, you want to know what file they came from, you don't have to do that by hand anymore. It all just shows up because of this. So I have this logging config dot py that actually gets loaded or that actually gets run invoked one time in main and then I create a logger and then after that I can start doing logging which you don't see till we're down in the parser piece here right logger.info blah 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 okay uh, the only thing I want to say here so this is going to be at the info level and you'll notice here that I did uh, did not create a single string I actually took the string and used the percent s formatter and arg and put passed in the variables that I wanted and that's because logging is super expensive. You build all these strings to put out. If it turns out that you have the logging level set where it wouldn't account out, we don't want that string to be built because that'll be expensive. So what this does is it passes all these parts into info. And if we weren't actually going to log, if the handlers weren't really going to log, 
They won't actually build the string and we save the string construction cost. This can be, if you want a lot of debug output when you're developing and you don't want it to impact prod, that's what you do, you do this. And then we talked about the logging config file. Um, so I just want to show this. The logging config file, right? So the logging config YAML that's loaded in the main program. Here is loading, it loaded this file. And you can basically, it lets you decide what you want the output to look like. In my case, I'm doing it, this is a multi-processing program. So I actually want the process ID for each of the individual components. I want the meth, I want the file name. So it would be like, in this case, um, this one here would be counts and this would be main. So this would be like what time it is, info, the process ID, counts, the function name, which would be like write this, and then the line number and the actual message. And then basically you can set up these handlers to go different places. This goes to standard out. These go to different files, info, error, and debug. And then I also, um, and then each individual file, because we create a logger in each one, right? When I was in here, I created a logger right here in the init statement for this processor. Self.logger logger equals blah, blah, blah. Each one of those loggers we can configure differently to have different handlers or different levels. If you don't want to do that in the beginning, you just delete all this and you set the root and then all the loggers that we created, the one that was in main and the one that here is in count and the one that's in detectors, all of those will come up with info and they'll just log to the console and they won't go to a file. So the simplest way to do this, you just delete this and send it right to the console. So the other thing I kind of wanted to show, so that makes sense, right? We're going to load a config where it's going to create all these handlers in the logging subsystem. We're actually going to create a logger with underbar, underbar, name, underbar, underbar, and that will check and that will set the name of the logger to be something. And then those handlers will be bound to that logger and each of those handlers will send the output to a different place. So, uh, so we looked at that here. In this case, I couldn't make up my mind. I got all detail oriented because I'm an overachiever and you don't need it. Um, but what you want to do is look at this logging config file. And in this case, I have three output files in the console. Probably in the beginning, all you really need is standard out. But if you're building a production process and you want the logs to go somewhere, then you'll want log output, right? So the only other thing I want to show here is kind of what the log output looks like. So in this case, I did the multi-processing one, right? And what I said was we have the time, we have the logging level, the process ID, the file it came from, the function we're in, the line number, and the message. I gotta fix this message. But you can see here that when all of my multiprocessors started up, right? So I have detector services counts and capture are the four processors for this multiprocessing app. You can see that they all have different process IDs here and that these are the files they were in, and that was the run method that basically when it started up, that's what we saw. And then if we come down here, I'm gonna type this offline. So in this case, we can actually see, I said I had a debug file and an info file. There were no errors in this app, so no errors came out. Um, and you can see here that we, the info logs captured info, some info messages, and the debug logs actually, what did the debug log catch? It's a little bit more than the info statement. There must be a debug statement in there that I must have enabled in one of them. And that's it, right? So um, it's pretty straightforward. You have a config file, you load it once. I'm sorry, you have a config script, a function that you're gonna call that's gonna load the YAML file you call that one time, and then everywhere you want to use a logger, you init it, and then you do log.info, log.debug, and make sure you do it with uh, lazily instantiated strings. And that's it. I hope that's useful. Have a great day. Leave feedback.